For this episode, we shall take up adjusting entries which is the fifth step in the accounting cycle following the preparation of the unadjusted trial balance. Adjusting entries are entries that are prepared to reflect accurate data in the financial statements. Adjusting entry is different from correcting entry because a correcting entry is one that is made to rectify an error previously committed when recording a transaction. Depending on the error, there are two approaches to correct an error, number one reversing the first entry, and taking up the correct entry or number two by reclassifying only the erroneous account title. For example, an office supplies expense was erroneously made to the office supplies inventory account. Say the original and erroneous entry is, debit office supplies inventory $100 and credit cash $100. The correct entry is debit office supplies expense $100 and credit cash. Take note that only the account title that was debited was erroneous hence any of the following approaches is applicable. The correcting entry in applying the number one approach of reversing the first entry is debit cash $100 and credit office supplies inventory $100 and then the second entry is to take up the correct entry of debit office supplies expense $100 and credit cash $100. Under second method, the adjusting entry is debit office supplies expense $100 and credit office supplies inventory $100. Take note that this option is correct if only the account title is wrong but the amount is correct. The differences between adjusting entries and correcting entries lie in the purpose and the account titles involved. Adjusting entries are those that are required to reflect the accrual method of accounting and involve at least one balance sheet account and at least one income statement account, whereas, correcting entries are those that are made to correct an error in a previously recorded transaction and can involve any combination of balance sheet accounts and income statement accounts. There are two accounting methods of recording transactions, cash basis, and accrual basis. The cash basis is a method where recording is done when cash is received for revenues, and when paid for expenses. While under an accrual basis, recording of revenues and expenses is done when they are earned and incurred, respectively. It is also used to comply with the matching principle. The advantage of using an accrual basis is its being able to give a more realistic idea of income and expenses during a period of time, therefore providing a long-term picture of the business that cash accounting can't provide. It is for this reason that this method is more commonly used than the cash method. This is also compliant to GAAP. Adjusting entries are grouped into two, number one accruals, number two deferrals. Accruals covers revenues earned or expenses incurred that have not been previously recorded, while deferrals cover receipts of assets or payments of cash in advance of revenue or expense recognition. The following are the seven types of adjusting entries, accrued revenues, accrued expenses, unearned revenues, prepaid expenses, depreciation, amortization and bad debts are doubtful accounts, one accrued revenues, under this type, revenues are recognized when a service has already been performed or rendered for a customer but payment is not yet received. The adjusting entry in the month the service is performed is debit accounts receivable and credit service revenue. Two accrued expenses, under this type, expenses are recognized when it is incurred. For example, the service has already been rendered by the employee but the salary or wages will only be paid on the next month. The adjusting entry at the end of an accounting period is debit salaries and wages expenses and credit salaries and wages payable. Three unearned revenues. This refers to a customer's advance payments for goods to be delivered or services to be performed in the future. If the company initially recorded the cash receipts transaction as debit cash account and credit sales or service revenues account, the month-end adjusting entry is debit sales or service revenues and credit unearned revenue. At the accounting period, the goods are delivered or the services are performed, the adjusting entry is debit unearned revenue, credit sales, or service revenue, for prepaid expenses, these represent advance payment for expenses to be used for several periods and starting from the accounting period it was paid in advance, for example, prepaid rent. The adjusting entry on the first month the rented space was used as debit rent expense and credit prepaid rent for one month rent only. 5. Depreciation. This is the process of allocating the cost of a tangible asset over its serviceable life. An example is office equipment. For the accounting period, the adjusting entry is debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation by the same amount. 
The accumulated depreciation account is the total depreciation expenses of a company's tangible assets as of a given period. 6. Amortization. Amortization is the process of allocating the cost of an intangible asset over its serviceable life. An example is leasehold improvement. For the accounting period, the adjusting entry is debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization by the same amount. The accumulated amortization is the total amortization expenses of a company's intangible assets as of a given period. 7. Bad debts are doubtful accounts. These represent the estimated and collectible amount for credit sales revenues during the period. The adjusting entry at the end of an accounting period is debit bad debts are doubtful accounts expenses and credit allowance for bad debts are doubtful accounts. The allowance for bad debts are doubtful accounts represents the total estimated amount that the company will not be able to collect from its total accounts receivable.